Welcome to Theater Appreciation at Motlow State Community College. This is me, uh, Associate Professor Emily Seal. I do have an MFA, a Master of Fine Arts in uh, Acting in Theater Performance. That is my lovely family, my son Elliot, who you'll hear me talk about all the time, and my husband Davis, he also works at Motlow. So it may confuse you. If you look at your schedule, you may have a different um, instructor of record. And just like at a big school, you may have a lecturer um, versus the person grading your papers uh, that you can compare that model to what we're doing here in an online environment. I'm the one, uh, your lecturer, but you may have a different um, instructor of record, such as Brendan Taylor or uh, Phyllis Adams, grading your papers and discussing things with you on the chat. And they also have degrees in theater, um, but I'm just kind of creating this master shell with all of these lectures in it. So um, I recorded most of these lectures last year. And so uh, you may hear some things that don't relate to the pandemic. And I apologize that some of the content is sort of outdated, uh, as it were. These are strange times, and keeping up with everything uh, can be difficult. Perhaps the most impacted by the pandemic is your production critique. So you can either take um, art or music or theater for your general elective credit uh, for, uh, sorry, your general studies arts credit. And so, um, you know, if you're in art, you're supposed to go to a gallery. If you're in music, you're supposed to go to a concert. And if you're in theater, you're supposed to go to a live theater production. So you may hear me say in the lectures, live production critique. We have had to change that assignment to just a production critique. So if you're in Times Square, if you've ever been to Times Square, you know it's usually crowded and noisy, and right now it is eerily quiet. Um, all of Broadway is shut down. We have a um, link in the uh, learning software to these recordings of Broadway experiences, and that's what we're going to ask you to write your critique over, is a recording where you can hear the audience reacting. It's almost as if you were there on Broadway watching the performance with them, but you can get with your individual instructor, whether it be me or someone else, and they can help you figure out what plays are acceptable to write your critique. It does need to be a full length play, not um, you know, a one hour children's play or something like that. It needs to be a full length production. If you're going to see a musical like The King and I or um, something like that, Newsies, if you're watching one of those, then those are definitely full length. Um, it is not, by any stretch of the imagination, the first time that the business of theater has been affected by uh, pandemics, global um, illness. If we look at Shakespeare's, he wrote some of his best sonnets during the plague. If we look at Into the Woods, um, Sondheim wrote that during the AIDS crisis, when a lot of the people that he knew and loved um, died from um, AIDS. If you look at the first half of Into the Woods, it ends with sort of a fairy tale ending. And if you're doing the junior version, that's where a lot of the kids plays end. But then we come back from the second half and, you know, half the cast is gone. Half the cast has died um, at the hands of a giant. And a lot of that was Sondheim just kind of processing what happens when all these people just sort of disappear from our lives. So, um I say that to say I think theater will make it through this. I hope that theaters will come back better than ever if we all protect ourselves and wear our protective uh, masks and social distance. That said, if you feel safe uh, going into a theater and seeing a production, um, I am trying to decide right now whether I'm going to go this weekend to the Manchester Art Center and see a radio play. Um, if you feel see safe seeing a live production, that is your prerogative. It's definitely more engaging than a recording, um, but a recording is more cost efficient, obviously. It's cheaper. So just a few things to think about, and um, this is uh, the big paper that's due at the end of the semester. So you'll hear me talking in all of these lectures about your production critique. And I would encourage you um, to start thinking about that now, to start perusing through the Broadway HD and see what plays are available. I, for example, really enjoy Hamilton. That's something that came out on Disney Plus over the summer that your professor may let you choose 
uh, to write your critique over. So lots of options there. Um, not nearly as fun as us piling in a van and going to TPAC and seeing um, a live Broadway style play, uh, which is what we would do um, if there weren't a pandemic on. So I know some of you are no stranger to online classes and uh, to those of you who are new, welcome. I know this may not be even the modality that you would have liked to have taken this class, but coming from somebody, I have an entire um, speech communication education degree online, certification online, and so I, I've been where you are. And the first thing that I will tell you is please, please, please read your syllabus, reread your syllabus, go through those dates and go ahead and put them on your calendar. I've tried to set it up so that every Thursday at three, you have a deadline. So you kind of know that's coming. Now my class is set up asynchronously so you can work ahead, you can um, get the ball rolling and um, you know, if you're super motivated here at the beginning of the semester, you can finish by midterm if you wanted to. Um, because once again, when I was a student, I knew, okay, I have a big work week coming up. I need to get all the work done for the next few weeks, you know, done now so that um, my work obligations don't interrupt my student obligations. So I, I know well that sort of juggling that has to go on. The worst thing that can happen that I see over and over again is students aren't aware of the deadlines and they let them pass. And um, that's just uh, so important. It, you know, if you're in a regular classroom, your teacher can say, hey, I still haven't seen this work from you, kind of casually in passing. Um, whereas in an online environment, it can can be less personable that way. So please make sure you're keeping up with your assignments. Please make sure that you're doing all of the reading, watching the lecture before you try to take the quiz. That's another thing I have people say, I thought I understood the content and then I went to go take the quiz and realized too late that I didn't understand the content. Every quiz I've given you a list of terms that you can look up in your book and make sure that you understand and have defined. Um, uh, or concepts, make sure that you've look up and understand um, before you go in to take that quiz. Please, please, please don't jump into that quiz um, because you only get one attempt. I know some of you in other classes get multiple attempts, um, but we're trying to mitigate cheating. And um, I know it may feel unfair, but uh, we have to try to keep our standards high. So we're asking you to take the quiz and pass it on the first attempt. So the textbooks for this course, um, the main textbook is The Lively Art, um, and it is by authors Wilson and Goldfarb. You have options. You can um, rent the textbook digitally or get a hard copy. That's just totally your preference. I'll also tell you there's not a huge difference between the different editions. I know some people, as a cost-saving measure, will try to get an older edition. That's fine, as long as you can figure it out. In the lectures, I will say, turn to page 79, and if, of course, if you don't have have the right edition, then the page numbers won't match up. So just your call. I don't have a preference as to whether you get it as a virtual textbook or an old-fashioned textbook. It's totally up to you. And then your supplementary text is Piano Lesson by August Wilson. August Wilson is one of the greatest playwrights of our time. Um, you may be familiar with um, Fences, which is a movie with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis that came out a few years ago. That's also an August Wilson play. And so you are going to want a hard copy of that. You may be able to find it at your local library um, or um, by some other means rather than purchasing it, but it's only like a $10 book. So um, there are not different editions. There's only one form of piano lesson, so feel free, whatever you can find. Uh, is is good to go. So another common complaint that I get is I'm just not creative. And as an arts teacher, this breaks my heart on so many levels. Um, if you're a person, then I feel that you are born creative and that a huge part of what an employer wants from us when you graduate with a degree is the ability to think outside the box, the ability to navigate things like a global pandemic when you have to sort of create a new reality. I think about, you know, my son is sitting in kindergarten right now and all of the problem solving that his kindergarten teacher is having to do in order to 
get these kids where they need to be. So creativity is a life skill. So when I'm asking you to make up a play, when I'm asking you to um, draw a costume rendering, please don't come to me and say, I'm not a creative person. Um, because that sort of defeatist attitude uh, is part of the reason that you're required to take an arts class because creativity is a life skill and a hugely, hugely important one for you to be a flexible um, employee in the future. So that said, your costume rendering, you get to trace the body form. I'm not going to grade you necessarily on your art skill. Um, I'm going to grade you. At, well, there's an entire um, rubric on how I'm going to grade you. So uh, please don't walk into in creative situations feeling overly vulnerable, feeling like I'm there to be mean to you. Um, like maybe I had a mean art teacher, so <laughs> she would shame me. And I, you know, I, I'm not going to be that kind of art teacher that you'll turn in your assignment to me and it'll be very private. Or you'll um, write your poem on the discussion board and nobody has to respond to it. So I've tried to kind of protect you against adverse consequences when you are creative. All right, so you have those quizzes. They occur, if you look at the schedule, kind of weekly is the way I have it set up. Now, of course, there's fall break, Thanksgiving break, but for the most part, you have a quiz every week. Like I said, Say you finish week one quiz and you're feeling productive, you have another, you know, a few hours and you're on a roll, go ahead and work ahead. There's nothing saying you can't go ahead and work ahead in this course. And pretty much every week there's a discussion question. Now that is tied to the content that you're reflecting on that week. But I haven't made the discussions close. When I was a student, I kind of got frustrated because um, we would be in a good discussion and all of a sudden it would get digitally cut off. Um, so I didn't want that to happen to you guys. If you're having a good discussion, if it's a productive discussion, um, I wanted that to be open. What I don't want you to necessarily do is log in the first day and do all the discussion questions without being in the content because most of the discussion questions are using the content you're reflecting on. So um, take those discussion questions as you do the rest of the module. Uh, Say, so you, you know, read chapters one and two, go do the discussion question read the chapter, listen to the lecture, then take the quiz, that kind of thing. So your first paper, which is due at midterm, is a character analysis of Piano Lesson. So there is a movie version of Piano Lesson Online. You're more than welcome to watch that on YouTube, but you are going to need a hardbound book because you have to reference the act and scene numbers. So you need to have a, a guide in front of you. Um, so uh, that paper will be due at midterm. You can see all the information about the paper under the module uh, titled Piano Lesson. And then like we already discussed, at the end of the semester, you have a cumulative assignment where you've looked at how to write this paper from the very beginning. It's kind of all semester we'll talk about it. And then you'll watch a recording of a production and then write your critique over it. The costume rendering will come in the design section. There's a whole, um, there's lots and lots of instructions in that lecture about how to do that. So kind of generically calling it a module. A module just means um, a, a group of assignments. And uh, of course you wanna start by reading the textbook. When people tell me, I'm not doing good on these quizzes, I'm listening to your lecture. Uh, you know, I've had students come to my office the first thing I say is, have you read the textbook? Because the concepts that I'm sort of glazing over on the textbook goes in depth. So you really want to make sure you're reading, highlighting that book, uh, really digging into the content on your own terms. After you've read the chapter, when you listen to this lecture, I am working on the presumption that you've already read. And I'm going to go back and highlight the key terms, the key ideas that you're going to be assessed on. Then you're going to go right on that discussion board, reflecting on the content, talking with your peers, hopefully helping you to process that in a way that maybe people in your class can communicate to you in a way that I can't understand. Um, they can kind of help teach you the content too, and I encourage that. 
Then, of course, you know, at the midterm and the final, don't forget the paper. And then there may be an activity such as the rendering. And then once again, I would encourage you to review. Look at those terms and concepts. Double check that you're ready to take the quiz because you only got one check, uh, one shot at that quiz. And then um, don't go into that quiz until you're ready. So my last thought for you, my fellow hunger downers, as Leslie Jordan would say, is I also teach communication. And um, in this pandemic, we have seen lots of people raising their blood pressure, lots of people going to Twitter to say nasty things. Um, and I want to encourage you in your digital communication, especially, you sit down to write me an email, please, or, or your professor of record, an email, please make sure that that email is respectful, that it doesn't use profanity. Um, no matter how frustrated you get, uh, we need to keep the lines of communication open. I want you to be emailing me your concerns, talking to me if you need an extension, or your professor of record if you need an extension. Um, but there's never an excuse uh, for you to be rude. And that's just one thing. Um, we do reserve the right to kick you out of the course. We reserve the right to um, to not communicate with you anymore if you're being disrespectful. I don't get this as much with my on-ground classes. Um, I, you know, when I go to an on-ground class, I find that when people have to look you in the eye and relate to you person to person, they're going to be respectful um, most of the time. But for some reason in the online environment, uh, whether it be, you know, through Twitter or <laughs> through uh, emails, uh, people can, are just a lot more comfortable being disrespectful. So I just want to challenge you um, to always reread that email before you send it to me and say, hey, does this sound snarky? Does this sound ugly? Um, and please remember that the person that you're writing that email to is a human being. Um, and also on the discussion boards, of course. Um, you know, we will have times when people say things you don't agree with. I never say you have to reply to every single person in the discussion board. If they're saying something you don't agree with, just move on, right? This is a professional environment. We don't want to use curse words. We want to use our best grammar, all of that on the message boards. And we want to model professional business discourse um, because that's what we are aiming towards, right? We're working towards professional jobs. I love this class. I love theater. I can't wait for them to open back up again. Um, and if you walk away from this class with just part of the enthusiasm that I have for creativity, for theater, for um, art in general, then I will have done my job. As always, thank you for listening.